Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z. And today, I am here with another comparison video. And in this video, we're going to discuss comparing the 2020 Chicago White Sox to the 2020 Tampa Bay Rays. And a new feature that I am going to have in the videos from now on is the games. In other words, the games that we, the dates that we play, the team that I'm talking about. To make it clear that we really do need to know our competition, even if we're only going to play them on a limited basis, which is what we are going to be doing with Tampa Bay. We will be playing the Tampa Bay Rays on May 5th, 6th, and 7th in Chicago, and August 31st and September 1st, 2nd, and 3rd in Tampa Bay. So there is seven games that we will be playing against the Tampa Bay Rays in 2020. So it behooves us to know what we're getting ourselves into when we play those games. Now the Tampa Bay Rays are a legit team. They are good. They may even win the uh, American League East from the Yankees. I know the Yankees are good. I know the Yankees are stacked, but this is a good team. And if they don't win the East, they're going to probably be one of the wild cards or, you know, in the running there for the wild card thing, whatever that is, the one game play in and then <sighs> you get the idea. But anyway, yeah, Tampa Bay is going to be a good team. So over here I've laid out and uh, you, this is in previous videos, so if you want to go back and look at my previous videos, I have laid out, well, actually the more recent ones, because this is the most up-to-date, but this is what we're looking at for the White Sox. A lineup that contains, not necessarily in this order, maybe this is not the batting order, but a lineup that contains Lewis Robert in center, Tim Anderson at short, Johan Moncada at third, um... Jose Abreu at first, and Canarcion at DH, Grandal at catcher, Jimenez in left, or Jimenez, sorry, in left, um, Mazzara in right, and um, Man Man Mendick to start the season, potentially at second, followed by Mandrigal when he comes up after his free agent clock hasn't, um, has stopped running, and this year wouldn't count as a year of um, towards his free agency. Then you got a rotation of Giolito Keuchel, um, who was acquired in the off season, uh, Lopez, Gonzalez, Gio Gonzalez, who was also acquired in the off season, and Dylan Cease, or possibly Kopech. Depends on how the White Sox decide to go. Maybe even depends on um, spring training results. Who knows? But right now, I'm assuming that that fifth spot would be held down by Cease. And that Kopech potentially either would be in the minors for um, some more rehab and seasoning um, before he was brought up or as an injury replacement. Or he might make the, rotate, or the uh, bullpen for the White Sox when they break camp. But again, these are all decisions that management has to make and might be driven in large part by uh, spring training results. And then you've got the bullpen, the rest of the bullpen, Cord um, Jimmy Cordero, um, Alex Calame, um, Bummer, Evan Marshall, Carson Fulmer potentially. Although we'll see, he hasn't had a very good major league track record, so we'll see what happens with that. Um, Ke Kelvin Herrera, and then of course the newly acquired Steve Ciszek in the pen. And then on the bench, uh, Lurie Garcia, who also might be up here as the second baseman in the lineup. Again, we'll see, depends on um, spring training and what management decides. Um, then you got mechanic catcher as a backup and uh, Zach Collins potentially and then also Adam Engel my personal favorite I love Adam, Adam Engel so um, we'll see but you know we'll see if that's 
um, how it all pans out um, in the end. Uh, several people, I've had comments from people that have said that Lurie Garcia should be up here at second base. Two things I would say um, that um, why that isn't really the best course of action for the White Sox. One is that Lurie Garcia can play a lot of positions. He can play the outfield as well as the infield. So he's better suited as a super utility guy and fill-in player than he would be as the second, the starting second baseman when you've got two guys that play second base. Um, and the other thing is that with these guys, Mendick and Mandrigal, <clears throat> we don't know what the ceiling is on those guys. We don't know their unknown quantities at the major league level over an extended period of time. Uh, so we have no idea. They could be, you know, the greatest thing since sliced bread. Lurie Garcia is a known quantity. We know what he's going to do. And it's not bad. He's not a terrible player by any means. But he's also not an all-star. So we know, you know, the book is out on him. So, any, so that's why I would say Lurie Garcia probably is better served as the uh, being the team's super utility guy. But what do you guys think? Leave a comment below. And uh, before we get into the Rays, I want to remind everybody, subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. If you like this content and you want to be informed when I come out with new stuff, subscribe, ring the bell, pass it on to other White Sox fans. But now let's get into the Tampa Bay Rays. Now, this is the projected lineup. This is what I found on RotoChamp. Um, they're usually pretty good at keeping stuff updated because, as you can see, they've got Jose Martinez here at DH. So, yeah, um, the newly acquired Jose Martinez from the Cardinals, where the Tampa Bay Rays uh, pulled off that, uh, that big, uh, big to-do deal with them. So they're going to have potentially Brandon Lowe leading off at second base. Um, he hit, uh, I believe, 291 last year with 17 home runs and only like 289 at bats. So the dude has some power. Then you got Austin Meadows in left field. He had 33 home runs, I believe, last year. So he's a good player. He is a solid player, that guy. Jose Martinez, of course, as I mentioned, coming over from the... Um, from the Cardinals, he only hit like 267 last year with about um, 11, maybe 11 or 12 home runs, something like that. So I don't know. I don't know what the big to-do was about getting him, but uh, Yandy Diaz, about the same deal. He hit like 261, maybe 17 home runs, somewhere in that area. Uh, G-Man Choi, he's a, you know another guy. He's a solid player, but he's not uh, all-star material. Hunter Renfro, he hit about 216. He had 33 home runs, but he hit 216. And, oh, by the way, Mike Zanino is another guy that's cut from that same type of mold. He's going to hit about 203 with 25 homers, 20 homers, something like that. That's about what you're signing up for there. Kevin Kiermeyer is a great defensive center fielder, but not much with the bat. But, again, a great defensive center fielder. And he, he's not... Um, a paraplegic at the plate, but you get the idea. Um, and then Willie Adams, or <laughs> that's what I always call him. I think it's Adamus. Um, is um, the uh, is projected to be the shortstop. I don't know how good his defense at short is, but uh, I, I suppose the uh, the Rays definitely know, and Rays fans are probably well familiar with. So now you got the rotation. Now, of course, we know with the Rays, um, on RotoChamp, it lists this five guys as their starting rotation. But we know that only three of them are really a starting rotation. And the other two spots are a serious rotation, like a revolving door rotation of um, openers and closers and middlemen and all kinds of crap that the Rays do. But Charlie Morton was legit. He won 16 games last year, and he had a 3.09 earned run average. Blake Snell had a bad year last year, but two years ago he was the uh, American League Cy Young Award winner. 
Um, and then Tyler Glasnow um, was injured last year, but he was pitching great when he went down. He had like a 178 earned run average and an 089 whip. So those three guys are solid as it gets. And then, of course, you got Yanni Ch Chirinos and Ryan Yarbrough listed as their four and five starters. But in reality, these guys sometimes will be the guy that comes in after the opener. I don't know what they call that guy. I forgot. Because, of course, the Rays are one of the very few teams that actually do this. And then you got, uh, in the bullpen, you got Emilio Pagan is their closer. And then um, you got Nick Anderson, Diego Castillo, Chaz Rowe. Chaz Rowe, I know a little bit about. He's not that great, but he's, you know. I mean, the Rays, well, they do need a good bullpen, at least in those last two spots. But for the first three, they're not going to need to rely on bullpen too much. Um, and then Colin Posh, I suppose that's uh, pronounced, and Oliver Drake. Now, Oliver Drake is interesting because Oliver Drake is at least the way that I remember Oliver Drake is a left-handed specialist and the um, and correct me if I'm wrong because I could be wrong about that but the new rules this year in baseball are that any pitcher that's brought into the game has to face at least three batters so if he is in fact a left-handed specialist it would be interesting to see if he really does make the team because Teams this year have got to be careful if they keep a guy who's really a left-handed specialist. I mean, you would have to bring him in when you were fairly rely you could fairly rely on the fact that the next three the next two to three batters are left-handed batters. But we'll see. Um, and how often is that going to happen? And really, the opposing manager could change that by just pinch hitting. So we'll see. Um, well, first of all, we'll have to find out if I'm actually right about the fact that he's a left-handed specialist. But then we'll have to see if the Rays decide to keep a left-handed specialist. And then, of course, Austin Pruitt. He's been up with the team. He's been up and down and in the rotation and in the bullpen for the last several years. Um, he's a middling guy. He's not great, but he's not terrible. And then you got the bench. Now here you got Joey Wendell, who is a super utility guy. He started playing the outfield last year for them. He is by trade a second baseman. He graduated from Westchester University with a degree in physical therapy, and uh, which he could have used on himself last year since he was injured. Um, and then you got Nate Lowe and Daniel Robertson. Now, of course, Daniel Robertson would be some of the trades that the Rays have made and some of the guys they've got, like the Lowe brothers, who are not really brothers, at least as far as I know. And, um, you know, and, and Wendell. Robertson kind of is an odd man out. It's a guy that they don't need, but he is versatile and he's good. And the, you would think the Rays would want to consider him as somebody that they would trade, um, which they might. And then, of course, Michael Perez is the backup catcher to Zanino. So that's what you got with the Rays. Now, the Rays, like I said, really good ball club. Um, I would not be surprised if they won the East from the Yankees because the Yankees always seem to have this great team on paper, and then they go into the season, and somehow they manage not to win the AL East. So... Um, We'll have to see. I mean, I don't know that the Rays are really quite that good. Um, certainly not on paper. They aren't. Because once you get, like, I mean, Meadows had 30-something home runs. Hunter Renfro had 30-something home runs. But the rest of these guys are in the high teens and low 20s for homers. Uh, or potential for homers. So... You know, we'll have to see. And you have to consider that the two guys that did have the 30-something home runs was at a time when, um, you know, we had a baseball with the uh, 
with the seams wound tighter. That's the, you know, this is just my personal thing, but this is what I heard is that the reason for all the home runs last year was that the baseballs were wound tighter because they were done by machine. And when you have more tightly wound baseballs where the stitches don't pop out as much, you have less drag on the ball and less drag on the ball obviously means more home runs. Now that's what I heard. Who knows if it's really true. Um, but you would think that's something that Major League Baseball is looking into and might want to do something about. So, um, but still, pretty solid team. If these guys didn't do that stupid closer thing for these last two, or opener thing for these uh, last two spots and actually went out and found themselves two good starters like their top three, they would really be a force to be reckoned with. But when you're when you're playing musical chairs in, at pitcher for the last two spots, you know I'm as you can tell I'm not a real big fan of that. Um, but it seems to work for them. I mean I can't deny that it it does seem to work. So what do you guys think? I mean again we only play the Rays seven times next year, so these guys are really like more the problem of teams in the uh, AL East than they are us. But we do play them. And, um, you know, they're going to be somebody to, they're going to be a team of guys to look out for. But what do you guys think? Let me know, um, you know, what you think in the comments and uh, uh, what you think of the Rays. And also, um, I guess that's about it for me. Sportsman Z signing off.